A mass spectrometer is a very important machine in the field of chemistry. This machine is specially designed to detect isotopes of a sample that is fed into it. Let's talk about how this machine works and then go into a few question examples about how you will see this on the IB exam. The machine is split up into different parts based on how it works, which are called stages. In the first stage, a chemical sample is placed into the device and then heated up to the point where it becomes vaporized into a gas. With this gas now in the chamber, during the second stage, an electron gun emits a beam of high energy electrons through the vaporized sample. This causes the atoms within the sample to lose some of their electrons and become positively charged cations. The third stage involves an electric field that is designed to accelerate the movement of positively charged ions. And because the atoms have just lost some electrons and are positively charged, they end up moving through the field. As they are moving, during stage 4, they pass through a magnet which deflects them and alters their trajectory. The degree by which they are deflected, and therefore are turned around this corner, depends on their mass and their charge. Atoms with the lowest mass and the highest charge are deflected more, which curves their trajectory more than an atom with a higher mass and a lower charge. At this point, the atoms are a bit scattered based on this mass to charge ratio. During the fifth and final stage, the atoms pass through a detector that is linked up with a computer to register exactly where the atoms are passing through, therefore determining their mass and their charge. Looking at it from this angle, the lower mass and higher charge atoms will pass through on this side, leaving the heavier and lower charge atoms to pass through on this side. This information is read by the computer which outputs data that can be plotted to show the mass and charge ratio of every element in the sample. This graph is showing the mass spec output for a sample of magnesium. This shows that 79% relative abundance of magnesium atoms captured had a mass to charge ratio of 24, 10% at 25, and 11% at 26. Each of these values corresponds to an isotope of magnesium and gives the relative percentage. This information can then be used to calculate the average atomic mass of this element, which we learned how to do in the last video. In addition, some questions can give you mass spec data of an unknown element and ask you to calculate the relative atomic mass and then identify the element. So if we look at this graph, we can see that there are five different isotopes of this element at these masses, with estimated relative abundance values based on the y-axis. We can plug this information into our atomic mass calculation, which would be 90 times 52, plus 91 times 11, plus 92 times 16, plus 94 times 17, plus 96 times 4, all divided by 100. This gives me a relative atomic mass of 91.35 when considering all of the isotopes. If we look at the periodic table, this element is likely zirconium, which has a mass of 91.224. My numbers do not match up perfectly because I was doing my best to estimate the abundance value from the graph, making sure the total abundance percentage equals 100. This can happen when you are doing your calculations, but there should be a close and obvious answer assuming that you did the calculations correctly.